So the winter test uh, kind of broke me in, trying to get back into rhythm. Fell off rhythm really hard. You know, unloading, uh, and especially like when you're in practice, you know, making adjustments and stuff like that, you only have a little bit of time. So it kind of just knocks the rust off and kind of gets you, get you going again. The winter test for us is an opportunity for young drivers to uh, experience the truck series. So we have late models um, at our disposal as well. So just kind of get them uh, in, in the truck, in the late model, kind of evaluate where they're at. We're not really so concerned about the funding, we're more concerned about uh, driving ability, and then we want to work alongside them and uh, find that, that money for them so that they can go race. This is going to be my second season, so I'm going to be a little more familiar with, with things, and I've learned a lot last year, so I think going into this season, I'm pretty excited about you know ha knowing a little bit more and being a little bit more prepared. I think our strongest part of our team is the people. Um, we have a group of very passionate people and they're very, very, very hardworking. I believe that we put in more hours than anybody else and I really hope that this year we get to, uh, we get to see the results of that in a, in a big way. So we finished 21st and 24th in owner points with the 33 and the 34 this uh, last year in 2019. So uh, as a goal and a plan, we'd like to exceed those expectations and we'd like to do better than that. Leading up to Daytona is probably one of the busier parts of our season. We built a brand new truck for Jason with a 33, so that was you know, pretty time intensive. It wasn't until Angela kind of came on board about two and a half weeks before Daytona that things really ramped up. So the last two and a half weeks was all geared towards making sure that Angela's truck and everything was all set up. So making sure that the wrap on the hauler was there and everything was ready to rock and roll. We had to pretty much build the entire truck in about oh, two and a half weeks. And that was, that was a lot of long nights, 18, 19 hours a day. Go home, sleep for an hour or two, shower, come back, and do it all over again. Fortunately, we, we got through it, and the turnaround time also, Daytona to Vegas, um, is pretty tough. It's pretty tight. So before we left for Daytona, essentially our Las Vegas trucks had to be finished. but everything got put together and we made it to the track. You've always seen it on TV. I mean, it's where the big race is at. It's everyone's favorite racetrack. Side by side for the win! Yeah, yeah. You guys are awesome. Awesome job, boy. I'd been there once as, you know, as a fan on the other side of the the fence. Then it was it was a weird experience being on the opposite side of the fence looking out at everyone else looking in. So it was pretty cool to actually be in there for the first time and actually be working. Daytona's cool and I myself have kind of some highlights in my own career that that I take personally from there. I finished sixth there last year. <laughs> Our plans for Daytona were to run three trucks, the 33, 34, and double zero. 33 was driven by Jason White, the 34 myself, and the double zero Angela Ruck. The 34, unfortunately, we lost a motor in practice, and uh, we didn't have a backup motor. Uh, it was a leased engine. We didn't have a we didn't have a solution for it, so we uh, unfortunately had to withdraw that entry and then uh, and then focus on the 33 and double zero. Being underdogs, it's very important that we put consistent efforts forward week in and week out. 
our program in order to sell rides and in order to attract marketing partners we need to be professionally appearing we need to be professional all across the board but we're also a performance driven industry so we need to have results that warrant the investment from others that you know we need to be successful and to survive and sometimes for us that's as simple as just crossing the finish line drivers start your engines Well, the 2020 season is about to get underway. Coming off of the tri-oval, crashing down into turns one and two. One truck gets upside down, slides across the top on his lid. That's Ty Majeski, a hard crash. Still upside down, sparks billowing. He slides down onto the apron of the racetrack on his roof. Some flames erupting out of the engine compartment of that machine. Field has come into the tri-oval. We are about to go under the red flag after Ty Majeski gets turned on his roof and slides all the way out of the trioval into turn one here at Daytona at lap 15. Seeing a truck go upside down like that, like, oh, when you think about it, it just gives you cold chills. I mean, at any second, that could be your truck sliding on a roof. It was scary. With the safety that NASCAR has, I wasn't really concerned. I was just like, wow, that's like, what, like a half mile down the stretch, you know, we went from the start finish line to like turn one. But you know, when you see any wreck that's bad, regardless of whether or not they, you know, they're going upside down, you're always thinking like, you know, is everybody okay? And you can tell pretty quick if it's one of your drivers. And I think, I think the feeling that you have, if you're a true fan of the sport and you genuinely care is the same, regardless of it's, if it's yours or somebody else's, you hate it for the crew, you hate it for the team, you hate it for the driver and you're, and you're hopeful that they're okay. Tires aren't very important at Daytona. They're really, really hard. Um, in fact, if you look at like the ARCA race and stuff like that, a lot of those guys will win that race and won't even come in for tires. With us, I believe the 33 and 34 on each one of their pit stops just took left sides the first time and right sides the second time. We did struggle on the pit stops a little bit, the fuelers. Um, it was on our end, actually, we had uh, some issues with some O-rings, which we resolved, but the pit crew did an excellent job of listening to the radio and drivers listened and we were able to resolve it and make sure that the trucks got full, full of fuel. But pit crew did an awesome job and um, thankful for the good group of guys we have over there. Angela had that one weird thing where her, the window must have fallen out. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Fortunately for us, we had a spare window that was uh, fabricated back at the shop, just, you know, uh, kind of on a whim, like, hey, what are we going to do if we lose a window? And we're like, well, we'd be in trouble. So we took the time to make one, and I'm thankful that we did, and uh, we really didn't skip a beat on that. We were able to, uh, to get that window from the hauler down to the, down to the pits, and when Angela came in, we got it installed and back on the racetrack. Too much at stake here to get a win at Daytona. They're going to push harder and harder as we get toward the checkered. Knowing it was our truck, it was really cool because it was in the front pack that whole time. And or the truck looked sharp, you know, the bright orange. It was really neat. I mean, it popped for sure. Any wrong move from anybody can just be the end of that truck. I have never been that nervous about anything. The plan going into the race was to survive. I think speedway racing is uh, more about risk management. Trouble, one truck sideways, it's Angela Ruck, slides up the track, collects the Brett Moffitt race truck, who slides through the infield grass. A multi-truck crash breaking loose in turn four. 
when it ended up crashing, it, it was definitely a bummer, but it was really cool to, for the first half of the race to see it be competitive. It was kind of like a, your heart just dropped. He's You spend a lot of time trying to make sure that, you know, attention to de detail, make sure everything looks good. And as soon as it starts wrecking, you know, it's, it's you know, especially in that case, you know, it's going to be pretty, pretty uh, terminal. Well, I knew that she was going to be out of the race. So kind of right away, I shifted my focus to almost like, is the 33 going to make it through? Unfortunately, Jason was, was smart enough to, to stay back far enough and, and be around people that, could all slow down gradually together. I started to seriously think about it about 20 laps to go with Jason, because I think at that time we were running about 26. I could see that they were racing up front hard enough that they were going to wreck, and that was kind of our big moment where I was you know, trying to make sure that we were smart and stayed where we were and was betting on the fact that they were going to crash. Lassar spins off the front bumper of Ankrum, straightens it out, doesn't go all the way around a miraculous save, and guides the truck back onto the racetrack. We stay under the green flag. Three laps to go at Daytona. Grant Enfinger by a fender on the extreme outside lane. Here they come, looking three wide again. Oh, they're tearing it up. They're colliding, and the whole pack comes apart. Everybody crashing, with the exception of Grant Enfinger and Gilliland. A dozen trucks and more spinning and crashing. Too many trucks to name and a gigantic cloud of smoke as the pack came apart in turn two. I think they lucked out with the caution right at the end. Um, I mean, obviously, that's when the moves needed to happen, and that's when, you know, when Jason was there, he made it happen. As a fan, I like to see moves happen the entire time. I want to see people battling like Angela did. So to see the trucks you know, shuffling around was really neat. As being a part of you know, the team, I was like, you know, just stay alive. And we talked about the strategy of laying back. Laying back from the big pack, waiting on that crash to happen. Now they find themselves in position to have a solid finish. It's NASCAR overtime at Daytona. Here they come with the white flag in the air. The leader crosses the line, takes the white flag. It's Grant Enfinger, they head back to turn one. Enfinger trying to hold off the pack and he's got trucks all over his back bumper. Chastain to the outside, he gets sideways. Slides up, keeps it off the safer barrier. These four trucks lined up. Anderson to the rear bumper of Enfinger. He's there, can he make a move? Enfinger looking high, looking low, trying to defend the race lead as they come to the checker. Jordan Anderson working Grant Enfinger over. Here's Anderson to the outside. It's a sprint to the finish line. They're banging quarter panels. Three wide to the line in a photo finish. It's gonna be Grant Enfinger who will win by one one hundredths of a second here at Daytona International Speedway. Wow, what a finish. Johnny Sauter was seventh with Ross Chastain in eighth, Sheldon Creed ninth, and Jason White in tenth. Wow, what a finish tonight here at the World Center of Racing. Especially for us, I mean, it's always special to get a top 10 because you know, it's, it's big when both of our trucks are in the top 20. And to see a top 10, that's a, that's, a, that's a victory for us. We had a little bit of everything, from the highest of the high to the lowest of going out and a motor pulling up on us in the first few laps. If I look at the, the history of this team, when we went to Daytona the first time, we missed the race and we took one truck. The second time we took two and we made the race with one. And this third most recent time, we took three and we made the race with two. So there's kind of this natural progression there. So that was, that was gratifying. From last year, you know, when I started with a team where we were going to the racetracks with two dualies rented from Enterprise, going across the country with, you know, race trailers and to have the hauler now and, and be, you know, such a fast growing team. You know, the next stop for us is, is getting a, a bigger shop and a, you know, that we can operate a little easier in. Um, so it's been exciting to see the growth. So for me, what I'm expecting this year is just you know, continuing the growth, continuing to be 
uh, competitive. You know, there's a few things that we've got to tweak on that the guys in the shop are doing everything they can. And I think by the end of the year, there's no reason that we're not competing for top 15s. We're almost there, so it makes it very exciting to start the year off like that.